Frank, I am always emotionally affected when I talk to physicists that the words symmetry and beauty often come up usually in, in the most fundamental kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. So as a fundamental physicist, how, how do you see these terms? Why, why are these so important? Well, in 20th century physics, one of the great themes, I think maybe the greatest theme, is that the best guide to the formation of new laws is the principle of symmetry. Now, when physicists use the word symmetry, they mean something very specific. Uh, it's, well, let me, I happen to have this icosahedron handy. Now, what's an icosahedron? An icosahedron is a 20-sided solid. Each side is an equilateral triangle, mm -hmm. and you can rotate it in very many different ways into, and if you rotate it in very many different ways, it turns out to assume the same shape. Mm -hmm. And that's what we mean by symmetry, that, that there's a distinction without a difference. So if you rotate it, its position is distinct, but there's no difference in the overall object. So symmetry means you can have a distinction without a difference. So, uh, for example, the special theory of relativity is a postulate of symmetry. It's usually stated as, the sta as that uh, observers moving at a constant velocity with respect to one another uh, see the same physical laws. Well, that's a symmetry. It means that those two ways of observing things uh, are distinct, and yet there's no difference. Just like so the this, rotation. Just like this rotation here. So you can have symmetry of objects, and you can also have symmetry of physical laws. And uh, it's amazing but true that uh, when we try to formulate new laws of physics, it's been a very successful guiding principle to suppose that the laws are symmetric. So that, for instance, you can have transformations of the laws of physics, whereby one kind of particle transforms into another, and yet the equations overall remain the same. So distinct ways of writing the equations, but they don't make any difference in the end. Mm. And the fact that they don't is symmetry. And that says something very specific and profound about the equations. Not just any equations will be symmetric, just like not any any old shape will mm. be uh, symmetric. And when you find that, that's a hint, but not a proof necessarily, right. that you're on the right track to something. That's right. And uh, we've learned to be very sophisticated in detecting symmetries. In fact, we've gone one step beyond. Uh, another powerful concept in physics has been broken symmetry. Mm. So for instance, if I take this icosahedron and squish it a little, you know, it's no longer symmetric. <laughs> and yet, it's not arbitrary. It still has the same number of vertices and uh, uh, links that it had before. So if you were confronted with such a thing, you might say, well, the number of vertices and the number of links suggest that really there was an icosahedron there and there's an underlying symmetry. And we see that kind of thing in the world. We see specifically, for instance, that the different interactions of nature, the strong electromagnetic and weak forces that go into our most profound description of nature, look similar and almost symmetric, but not quite. Now, if you let me take a very symmetrical system that includes them all and squash it a little bit, then it fits the world. So this has been a guide to trying to unify the different forces of nature. And it looks very promising, very right. And the crucial experimental tests of the idea, I think are not far off. So what you're saying then is there may be a, a more fundamental symmetry at an earlier stage or yes. a much higher energy stage or a closer together stage in terms of distance and all those things that gets broken as the energy drops or as the distance increases that yes. we see today. Right. So uh, the way we implement this is by saying that the equations have 
a lot of symmetry, but their solution in the actual universe uh, is sp more comp is spoiled by having uh, an, ex uh, an extra material that fills the universe that's not symmetric. We call it a Higgs field. But the basic idea, in that form it's very unfamiliar, but the basic idea is not so dissimilar from saying that the fundamental laws of physics are symmetrical in three dimensions. You can move in any dimension. But here on the surface of the Earth, of course, it's very different to try to move vertically than to move horizontally. <laughs> and we understand that because there's a gravitational field that works only in one direction. So the field spoils the... the breaks the, the symmetry. Breaks the symmetry. Of the three And we think that happens on a cosmic scale to spoil the underlying or hide the underlying symmetry of the basic equations. And that doesn't hide it completely. You still see but the spoiling, instances. But the spoiling of that symmetry is what makes the final expression of these laws possible to engender the world as we have it today. Absolutely, right. <laughs> so both the symmetry itself and the way it's broken are profoundly interesting and a lot of what we do in fundamental physics is to try to guess symmetries and simple ways of breaking them.